Hello everyone and welcome to Auto On Demand, where I post videos every Sunday about pop culture, politics, and everything in between. So imagine this, you're a regular schmegular person, maybe a couple hundred followers on your social media platforms, and you post something, you know, a little something racist, sexist, homophobic. Something fun, something for the summertime, something for the girls to, you know, get ready and party to. And then move along with your day thinking nothing of it. But then someone in your small circle leaks it to other people and those people leak it on Twitter. And then all of a sudden, tens of thousands of strangers on the internet begin flooding your inbox with death threats, emailing your school or your job, demanding your immediate termination. And within a shockingly short amount of time, people you don't even know have either held you accountable or ruined your life, depending on who you ask. But is this ethical? Should we be going to such lengths to hold people accountable just because they said, did, or posted something offensive? Or is this public shaming an effective way to make sure that bigoted people don't progress any further in our society to positions of power? In this video, we're gonna start by looking into the history of public shaming and how people that break social norms have been dealt with in the past. Then we'll look at a few modern examples of people who have been publicly shamed to the point of actually losing a job or a college admissions offer, like Justine Sacco, Lindsay Stone, and Taylor Phillips. And we're gonna end by examining both sides of this argument and talk about where we as a society should go from here. So all you have to do is sit back, relax, subscribe, and let's get into it. So public shaming in America goes as far back as the Puritans in the 1600s. Back then, anyone who crossed that thin moral line could be stoned, thrown into the stocks, paraded through town square, or worse. Obviously back then, the crimes were a bit different from today. <laughs> Less racist tweets, more witchcraft. <laughs> but still the same principle, humiliating people in public. Now fast forward to the 1700s when Benjamin Rush, who signed the Declaration of Independence, said that the practice of public shaming is quote, universally acknowledged to be a worse punishment than death. So yeah, people started to ask a couple questions about what public shaming could do to a person's physical and mental well-being. It took one more century for public stocks to start being abolished by law in the 1800s, and people were encouraged to start being nicer to one another and start valuing self-confidence and personal integrity. Now, obviously, shame didn't like disappear, but by the late 1900s, the government and public entities eventually just stopped sanctioning it. And if we even look back to the early 2000s, for instance, before the advent of social media, if someone did something offensive or problematic it might have been written about in a local paper or gossiped about within their community but eventually it would either fizzle out or the person could eventually skip town and start afresh elsewhere we've never had to exist in a society where regular people can do something in like illinois <laughs> and several different people across the world can hear about it almost instantaneously if it's juicy enough but today is different to say the least all you really need is a keyboard and some followers to either ruin your own life or ruin someone else's before we get into some examples i just want to give credit where credit is due. I got some of the stories that we're about to talk about today from these two books. So if you're interested in the topic of public shaming, I have the links to both books down below. Anyway, there have been hundreds of people that have had to pay the price for careless or offensive social media posts, but we can't talk about public shaming without talking about Justine Sacco. Now, I wasn't on social media around 2013. I was too busy being 14 and kind of ugly, but if you were, there is no way you missed this situation. The fateful day that Justine Sacco, a 30-year-old public relations executive, made the journey from New York to South Africa is one that I'm sure she will never forget. She was tweeting little jokes all day to her 170 Twitter followers, sending out little quips like, weird German dude, you're in first class, it's 2014, get some deodorant, and chili, cucumber sandwiches, bad teeth, back in London. But the tweet heard around the world came right before she boarded her flight to Cape Town. Going to Africa, hope I don't get AIDS, just kidding, I'm white. None of her friends liked the tweet or replied right away, so she just boarded the plane and settled in for her 11 hour flight thinking nothing of it and by the time she'd landed she was trending number one worldwide on twitter her tweet had been sent to a user with 15,000 followers and after he retweeted her tweet all hell broke loose. People were calling her racist, asking how she got her PR job. Her employer, IEC, said that her comment was outrageous and offensive, and they implied that she would be getting a very important call when she landed. Since she'd been in the plane and without cell service when everything was going down, people were kind of reveling in the fact that she didn't even know what was going on yet. Thus, the hashtag has Justine landed yet. She, of course, very quickly deleted the tweet and her account in general, but of course, the internet is forever. She immediately lost her job at IEC, 
and for months she wasn't able to date people or go anywhere outside her home. Justine did eventually get another PR job a couple months down the line and she seems to be staying out of the public eye as much as possible now which is very understandable. Before I get into my opinion let's move on to our next example. So going back a little bit to 2012, Lindsay Stone and her best friend Jamie had this thing where they would like take pictures of them doing the opposite of what a sign would say. So things like smoking in front of a no smoking sign like just dumb stuff like that. So in October 2012 they were visiting the Arlington National Cemetery and Lindsay took this picture pretending to shout and swear and also gave the middle finger to a silence and respect sign. Now the problem with that is that the Arlington National Cemetery is a United States military cemetery and is the final resting place of several hundred thousand veterans. So... So after the picture was posted on Facebook, a couple of her Facebook friends very understandably commented, this is kind of offensive. I know you girls, but it's tasteless. One or two people agreed under the post, but Lindsay was like, I'm not taking it down. They're overreacting. Then four weeks after posting the picture, her and Jamie were at dinner and all of a sudden their phone started blowing up. The picture had been shared widely across every social media platform. Lindsay received death threats, threats to sexually assault her, calling her pure evil and telling her she should rot in hell. By the time she was getting ready for bed that night, 12,000 people had liked the Fire Lindsay Stone Facebook page. Camera crews had parked themselves outside her family home. And the next day, her boss met her in the parking lot before she could come into work and asked her to hand in her keys. All of a sudden, Lindsay could barely leave home, couldn't go on dates, and was unemployed for over a year before she could find work at another center. Now guys, bear with me. We just have one more example before we get to the breakdown. This is more of a recent case. A couple a couple weeks ago, around the time of the death of George Floyd, a girl named Taylor Phillips posted this post on Instagram with the caption, Honestly, everyone needs to shut the fuck up about this guy who died. Follow the damn law and there wouldn't be issues. If you don't agree with me, I don't give a f because whatever you say won't change my mind. He wasn't innocent. He was doing something illegal. Also, Trump 2020 might as well piss everyone off. And then she followed it up with this Instagram story saying, Black lives don't matter to black people unless they are killed by a white person. If they did, blacks wouldn't kill each other. All right, now, Sis was mouthing off on Instagram saying that she didn't care what anyone thought until screenshots from her page leaked on Twitter. People quickly found out that she had recently received an athletic scholarship to attend Arizona Christian University the following year, mostly because she would make sure to brag to the people criticizing her that she had a full ride to college. And people on Twitter said not for long. They started writing emails and calling the university demanding that her admission and her scholarship be rescinded. And this is not a joke. This all happened on June 1st. On June 2nd, within 24 hours, her scholarship was invalidated, her admission was rescinded, her Instagram account was deleted, and apparently she changed her mind. Now obviously this kind of thing happens like almost every day on Twitter but I wanted to give you guys these three examples because even though I've covered cancel culture on this channel before I wanted to show how different things can be when you're a regular person because unlike celebrities that have massive fan bases and a lot of money to protect them regular people can actually lose everything in these situations at least temporarily. So let's finally get into the question at hand, like is all this ethical? There are people on one side that say, of course this isn't ethical. How could it be ethical for thousands of people on the internet to publicly shame, threaten, and ruin the lives of people they have never met, even if the person they're attacking did something that was wrong or offensive? Sicking some kind of internet mob on one person isn't the right way to go about accountability and leaves no room for education or repair. Then there are the people on the opposite side of the debate being like, um, sweetie, have you met social media? <laughs> People shouldn't be dumb enough to just post all kinds of nonsense on public forums and expect zero repercussions. That's not how the internet works. And when we expose a racist student, we stop them from moving on to become racist healthcare workers, politicians, teachers, lawyers. This is a public service. Comment down below what you think, but I fall somewhere in the middle. Take Justine Sacco, for instance. I'm a Nigerian woman and I'm still looking for the joke in her tweet, which essentially relies on the idea that Africa is some disease-ridden hellhole, makes fun of a life-threatening disease, and flaunts her privilege for the sake of some cheap punchline. So I'm absolutely not gonna sit here and say that she didn't deserve to be held accountable for her racist little joke. And if her employer decided that Justine no longer represented their brand, then so be it. Same with Lindsay, same with Taylor. They all did things that other members of society found very morally questionable. And just like they had the right to post those things on the internet, other people have the right to post their thoughts and critique their behavior. Also, I have a Twitter account. Um, Follow me at Odd On Demand, by the way. But every single time that I'm about to post something, I pause. I'm like, obviously, I don't have a huge platform right now, but if this goes viral, am I comfortable being held accountable for this? And sometimes the answer is no. 
no. <laughs> and I pressed backspace on a tweet that I typed out in a moment of anger or carelessness because I didn't want to end up like Justine or Lindsay or Taylor or the other hundreds of people that have gotten their lives ruined on social media. And just like these horror stories kind of scare me into watching what I say on the internet, they serve the same function for other social media users as well. And while people might see that as censorship, I don't see an issue with just taking one moment to pause and think about how your words might affect other people. Just like the Puritans way back when, it's always been a common practice to hold people accountable when they step outside the social norm. It just so happens that now it's much easier to spot these instances because they happen on social media platforms for the world to see. But there are a couple things that hold me back from being completely pro-internet shaming. For one thing, it really impacted me to read about the psychological and mental impact that their internet shamings had on both Justine and Lindsay. They said they weren't able to eat, sleep, and they were scared for their lives in those first few weeks. I really don't agree with the idea of sending death threats to people or leaking addresses and finding out where they live, harassing their family members. There has to be a line. Like, and obviously that's not a line that I or anyone really can dictate, but there's a line that I personally won't cross when it comes to holding people accountable for their behavior online. I've also been thinking recently about how effective shaming really is. Like, okay, we've gotten this person expelled or terminated from their job. Now what? The internet's attention span is very fleeting, and even though we all get to move on with our lives, the person is just left alone to pick up the pieces. Should justice only include the punishment, or should we be opening up a pathway for repair and trying to educate the people that post these things online? But please let me know what you think about public shaming in the comments. Follow me on Twitter at Odd On Demand. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!